So he just fucking kills these French ambassadors out in the fucking woods, and he starts World War fucking one. This is a world war. The Seven Years' War is the French and Indian War. the British versus the French and the Indians. So it's actually the British, French, and Indian War. So that's George Washington. He started that. He precipitated that whole thing. He like just like in World War One, how the assassination of Archduke um, Archduke Franz Ferdinand started World War One. The assassination of Jumonville started the Seven Years' War. So that's George fucking Washington, and he fucking lost that fucking battle. He, he assassinates these fucking ten innocent guys in the fucking woods and shit, and then eventually he um, he capitulates. He fucking signs a surrender agreement. Because, you know, all day the fucking French broke Fort Necessity down. So he's killing fucking Indians and in, in also the fucking French, you know, back then when he's a fucking British man. He's a British fucking general. Then in 79, when he's a revolutionary, he's fucking killing, you know, great fucking a fake revolutionary. Um, but when he's pretending to be revolutionary, he's murdering uh, the Iroquois people. He crushes the Iroquois Confederacy under John Sullivan after the massacre of John Sullivan. It, quote, lay waste all, all the settlements around, let the country may not be merely overrun but destroyed. Listen not to any overture of peace before the total ruin of their settlements is effected. The, George Washington was known by the Iroquois, the Hanadagayas and Kanatakarius. Those were Indian names which meant town destroyer because he destroyed fucking towns. He was a piece of shit. George Washington was not a good fucking guy. Terrorist, he's attacking, you know, civilians. That's what a terrorist is for political ends. They would also, uh, George Washington's troops would skin the bodies of the Iroquois from the hips, hips down to make boot tops or leggings. That's the, Sene the Seneca, the Iroquois of the Seneca. Um, he's well persuaded that they're all fucking wiped out. There's not a single town left of the five, five nations except for one. Uh, defeated the Loyalist Iroquois Army, burned 40 Iroquois villages to ashes. So basically attacking the British, attacking the Indians. It was all one and the same. You could just say, you know, the Indians was pro-British whether they were or not. It was all over their fucking land anyways. Not only were there, you know, the, the 28 Seneca towns was wiped out, but 40 Iroquois villages to uh, total were burnt down to ashes. And then many of the homeless and hundreds had died later on of exposure in the frigid winter. So there was lots of people that died afterwards. So he destroyed all these fucking towns. 28 Seneca, 40 Iroquois towns. They're all fucking dead. And the few that were still alive eventually were frozen to death. So this destroys the Iroquois Confederacy. And always remember the Iroquois Confederacy is where the entire American government came from. The idea there was five or six nations of the Iroquois and then they all you know formed one unit. So there was the Iroquois Confederacy. And that's what the American government was based on. The 13 colonies were their own individual fucking autonomous states, but then all the nations was part of one fucking nation. So, you know, the idea of having sort of the, the um, all for one, one for all type of fucking deal uh, that come from the Iroquois Confederacy. So that's George Washington. He's, he wiped out the fucking Iroquois. He was, uh, during his presidency, that was during the revolution, during his presidency, he had to fucking wipe out the Shawnee and the Miami who was in the Ohio, um, that was in modern day Ohio. He sent Arthur St. Clair, Josiah Homar. They had a big ass defeat. They couldn't destroy the Shawnee and the Miami Indians in Ohio. Um, George Washington's a fucking Freemason. So he's a Freemason, set a third generation plantation over, has all these fucking slaves. He never releases them, never thinks about releasing them. Uh, he murdered lots of Iroquois, he kept fighting the Cherokee during the Revolutionary War. Then there's the afterwards where he sends all the fucking uh, Arthur St. Clair's, Josiah Homar, and then eventually Matt Anthony Wayne into Ohio, and then they crush him. And then that says, hey, we're allowed to kill any fucking Indians in federal territory. That's the American way. Um, that's uh, two installments of the Sixty Years' War. The Sixty Years' War is the bigger context of when the whites or Europeans were attacking to steal American Indian land. And the beginning is the 1754 French and Indian War, which George Washington precipitated. And then the Revolution, which was the second big theater um, with the Europeans pretending that it wasn't about stealing the fucking Indian land. Simon Gurdy fought for the fucking Indians because... Um, during the Revolutionary War, which is a white dude who uh, fought with the Native Americans because he believed they was just trying to steal their land. Uh, he eventually dies an old man in Canada. So uh, even when France and Haiti was going through the revolution, George Washington sent the money to the totalitarian dictators. He traded with Great Britain with the Jay Treaty in spite of the France 
uh, helping America's revolution, right? France fucking helped us fight against the, the fucking British in here. George Washington is allying with the fucking British. And then we have to fight the fucking British again in 1812. So, you know, being allies with these fucking bastards and letting them get fucking stronger wasn't a good idea. That didn't help us. Washington, George Washington, Haiti was going through the revolution, the slaves were going through the rebellion, and George Washington sending fucking money to the French traders. So basically, if you're a totalitarian, dictatorial fucking piece of shit, you'll get some money from the government if there's a revolution that's coming up under your ass. And so that just shows to me that George Washington's a fake revolutionary. He just used the revolution at that time in order to bolster his fucking appeal. Didn't really give a shit about any of the other things that was going on when the true revolutions of France or Haiti was going on. He was completely against it. So, and also look at our own revolution. It forgot to include blacks as citizens. Indians were not citizens. Um, you know, the natives, the uh, women, and any white male who didn't own land or was under 21 years old uh, were not citizens. So the so-called fucking revolution basically forgot most of the country. Even the rich white property owning men, they have to go through the electoral college. So even they weren't even smart enough for the fucking founders. You know, the founders are just so fucking genius, right? They're just out of their mind when they come to their fucking geniusness. So American Revolution clearly was not a real revolution, not not if you want to you know actually define the the word revolution as like a change in political establishment or government. No, there was no British aristocracy, but it was still an aristocracy, and there's still oppression, and they still believed in the Leviathan, the power of the state. So Thomas Jefferson in 1812 he said that America was obliged to push push the backwards Indian with the beast of the force into the Stony Mountains. One year later. Thomas Jefferson continued anti-Indian statements by adding that America must pursue the Indians to extermination or drive them to new seats beyond our reach. So Thomas Jefferson is pushing for extermination. That's what he's saying in the War of 1812. That's exactly what the fuck Thomas Jefferson is saying. So, you know, all these imperialists, Barack, Bill, Clinton, George Bush, Jimmy Carter, I'm not sure if he actually bombed anybody. I heard that he bombed nobody. Um, but I think he gave money and he was like, you know, supporting the wrong fucking people in um, Latin America. But the, Jimmy Carter actually might be a fucking a bright point. He's fucking for marijuana. He's smoking marijuana. He's not for war. All these other motherfuckers are warmongers. Maybe they're just so fucking inundated with the horrors of war that they have to reach out for marijuana to sort of soothe their fucking souls, you know, because they see all these fucking limbs and people getting blown up and shit. How else are they going to just say, fuck it, let's just enjoy life, you know, spark up. So that's Andrew Jackson, Zachary Taylor, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln. These are all soldiers, you know, they were soldiers and they came across this. Abraham Lincoln was part of the Black Hawk War, which Zachary Taylor is a part of. And Zachary Taylor is as Louisville as Louisville can get. And we're going to get into Zachary Taylor coming up shortly. All right. So the uh, troops, let's see, Thomas Jefferson, Washington. Right, so, you know, the war seems that the Vietnam War brought some drugs back. John F. Kennedy, he's using the, uh, marijuana for his back pain. Okay, so Zachary Taylor. Well, I'm going to get back to him. So, I'm going to start a story today about old Rough and Ready. Okay, old Rough and Ready. This is, this is fucking Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. Zachary Taylor comes out of Louisville, Kentucky, the fucking 12th president of the United States. This is one uh, president that we could actually, you know, vouch for, that we could actually back up and say, hey, this is a motherfucker coming out of Kentucky, grew up in Louisville, returned periodically throughout his life. So this was his childhood. This was his boyhood home, was a frontier plantation. They called it Springfield. It's where he was made, married. Later on, he would own a farm on Beargrass Creek. Um, so Zachary Taylor served 40 years in the military as a hero of the Mexican War, so-called fucking hero. He's elected president in 1848 because of the notoriety of that conflict. Then uh, Zachary Taylor eventually dies in office of a sudden illness out of nowhere, probably poison, maybe by his wife, maybe by the fucking secretary of, of the state or of defense, maybe the vice president, who the fuck knows. Um, this was 16 months just after his election, so he's the third shortest fucking person in president, um, which is right under uh, uh, James Garfield and um, William Henry Harrison. William Henry Harrison was just in there for about a month or two. Garfield, I don't know, it's less than 16 months, so he's like the third shortest one. So that's Louisville, Kentucky, okay? You want to know about the caliber of Louisvillians? You want to know about 
Kentucky, learn about Zachary Taylor, old rough and ready, okay? Zachary Taylor had no fucking education. He grew up on a plantation, so automatically has this undeserved arist, you know, aristocratic fucking arrogance. Like, he's better than everybody, but he's being homeschooled, so he doesn't actually know, like, you know, how to socialize or what anybody else is talking about except for his own parents. He's got good penmanship and shit. Basically, and then he gets out into the military, and then he just, you know, who gives a shit about fucking school? You know, he's on a plantation fucking running slaves and shit, joins the military, running men. In the Mexican-American War, he actually has fucking, you know, there's a um, a lot of deserters and spies and shit. And if uh, anybody deserted in the Mexican-American War, he'd fucking hang them. He'd kill them motherfuckers. If they try to run away, he would kill them, shoot them dead in the fucking water. And that's what they did back in the day, especially since the Mexicans was offering 320 acres for anybody that would desert, uh, uh, get away from the fucking um, Zachary Taylors. He's uh, from Louisville. There was a lot of uh, a regiment of Kentucky volunteers, and I think Virginia, Illinois volunteers too. Um, but Kentuckians were very much in the War of 1812, very much in the Mexican-American War, very much in the Revolution. Kentuckians was there in the first half of the American fucking um, pages of history. Who knows if uh, nobody in Kentucky um, is being in fourth grade. You was taught some some of the shit in fourth grade in Kentucky, but in terms of having any type of Common Core standards or any sort of um, adherence to Kentucky civics, Kentucky law, Kentucky um, uh, history, there is none. There's no such. You know, we don't give a shit. It doesn't matter if you learn this shit or not. There's this doesn't unite all of us. You know, <laughs> this a bunch of individuals here in Kentucky. So Zachary Taylor's childhood home, this is in Louisville, Kentucky, okay? So Louisville, Kentucky, he's in a plantation. So this is this mentality, this is old rough and ready, right? He's uncouth, he's old rough and ready. So, you know, better do as his motherfucker says. He's a general fighting under Polk. Um, he does, he fights like lots of actually wars, the Black Hawk War. He fights the Second Seminole War. So he's in there fighting Native Americans and Indians. He's fighting Mexicans, real fucking bloody racist Eventually, he does redeem himself right before he dies. Um, but up until that point, he's just a fucking, really just a low-life piece of shit. Just old, rough, and ready, uncouth, fucking, you know, all disheveled. You better fight for me or else I'll kill you. Very fascist, totalitarian. I'm not sure what his religion is. Probably wasp. I mean, the uh, Mexicans was trying to appeal to the Irish Catholics. was like, this is not a Christian thing to do. You cannot kill. That's not Christian. What are you doing? What kind of Christian are you? Um, and the uh, Germans and the Italians and anybody else that was saying, you, we are all immigrants in this nation. How can you say this is our land or this is your land? Yeah, I mean, how can that be stated? Um, so that's what was happening in the Mexican-American War. And um, that becomes important later on because during the Compromise of 1850, uh, Zachary Taylor was on the side of the, um, the free, you know, not the slaveholders. He was sitting there saying... You know, the uh, the Confederates are holding the fucking government you know, um, under their fucking threat of secession. They was holding them on their fucking, you know, their grasp. So Zachary Taylor, he had wanted to... Well, we'll get to that in a second, actually. So, let's see. Um, so, the there's still the National... Zachary Taylor National Cemetery is on 4701 Brownsboro Road. Still here, 16-acre site. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, final resting place for veterans of six wars from Spanish American to the Persian Gulf and uh, so Zachary Taylor is the last president to own slaves there's a good there's a great fucking distinction right last he's a fucking slave owning you know grew up on a plantation you know privileged aristocratic general murdering fucking Mexicans murdering black hawks murdering Seminoles he's the third of four Whig president what's a fucking Whig then afterwards, Millard Fillmore, and who the fuck is Millard Fillmore? It's his successor who undoes his policies of, uh, of, of you know, uh, he was he was actually pro pro fucking freedom. He wasn't he was against slavery. He was pro union. And you know, at one point, Zachary Taylor at the very end, um, but he dies right. He's poisoned by the Southerners, and then Millard Fillmore gets in there and undoes it. Same shit happens with uh, Abraham Lincoln with. Uh, Andrew Johnson, he just undoes everything fucking Lincoln, you know, one and done, and then basically all of Lincoln's fucking dreams are dead in the water. So he's a fucking wig. Zachary Taylor's a goddamn wig. He's a, you know, fucking slave owning fucking piece of shit. He's killing fucking Mexicans, killing Blackhawks, killing Seminoles. 
Um, and uh, he's the second president to die in office. William Henry Harrison had died while serving as president nine years earlier. So they just had a president that had just fucking, you know, killed off. Uh, Franklin Pierce, uh, um, Zachary Taylor, and Andrew Jackson were all military men. They smoked it with their troops. Cannabis is twice as popular among the American soldiers in the Mexican War. It was in Vietnam. 